So looking at the handout, we're going to back up to the first part of it now. The search engines themselves give us do's and don'ts about SEO. Uh, they don't tell you everything though because one company creates an algorithm. Let's say Google creates a strategy for SEO and then another company borrows it and changes it and vice versa. Let's say Bing created an algorithm for search and then Google borrows it. So the point is that the search engines will tell you a lot of information but not all the trade secrets. I'm sure that behind the scenes of Google there's some sort of computer program that says if your site has this keyword it will never rank well. I'm sure there's some algorithm, some techniques that the search engines keep as trade secrets that don't publish so that the other guy doesn't copy it. But we can go look at the Google Webmasters um, handbook. We can go look at the Bing Webmaster handbook and all of the, the do's and don'ts are there for us regular people. If you follow that first link, all of, it's all here. What is Search Console? Create search-friendly content. Do you need SEO? So there's all of these articles. They can be pretty detailed and all of that. You're going to browse around there. The whole manual for Google search is right there. It's very valuable. Bing has one too. If I go back to the Bing section, I can click on, on Bing and it'll bring me to the webmaster right there. Getting started, help, frequently asked questions, all of that stuff. It's all there. Whatever we don't get to cover in this class, which, which is a lot, you can always look at it there, but we will be covering the most important stuff. But I've got in that handout the first link on each section is the manual. I go into then talk about different specifics and then I've got other links. Now what we're going to do is first set ourselves, set up our webmaster tools for Bing. As I said previously, Bing is the second largest search engine. We're going to set this up. You're going to see that it'll be relatively easy to do. Once we've got that done, we will <coughs> apply the same concept to Google. And a lot of you might already have a website that is set up for Google Analytics or Google Webmaster Tools. So we'll start with Bing first and then back up. But the process here will be, you know, we will read the manual, find out how it all works. We will verify a site. We'll do that right now. We'll set up a site map. We might not have a chance to do site maps, but that's something you need to read on your own and learn about on your own because a site map is basically a collection of every link on your website. It's a map of your site. Now in the real world, let's say you leave town, you go to another place, and you're going to visit a mall. You go to the mall and you in this other location, this other city, and you want to find a particular store. How many of you are going to wander around until you find the store, as opposed to go to the map of the mall, find the location, and go to the place? Probably most of you are going to want to know where your shop is and go to it. Less of you are going to wander around and maybe run into it. That's what a site map is for your website. The search engine, once we make it aware of our website, is going to wander around all over your site finding everything about it. A more efficient thing is to submit a sitemap, which is a list of all your websites, all your web pages on your website. Now, the sitemap is not a simple document that you just open Microsoft Word and start typing your, your pages. It's not that kind of a document. It's based on XML code, and honestly, I've been doing this for 15 years, I would not do a sitemap on my own. It's hard. And if I think it's hard, it's going to be hard for you. You're not going to do a sitemap on your own. You're going to use, if you've got WordPress, for example, you're going to use the WordPress SEO plugin by Yoast. If you've got Wix, there's a button somewhere there to activate sitemap. You're going to check on your website tool what is the way to create a sitemap because it's a technical document written in code that you then submit to the search engines. I mention here WordPress because I mention in almost all my classes and I recommend if you haven't started a website, I recommend to start a WordPress website. Uh, where, uh, WordPress has about 25% global market share, so that's hundreds of millions of websites built in WordPress. 
The actual WordPress software itself is free. You still have to pay to be to use a service provider, Bluehost, GoDaddy, Host Monster, whatever. But any service provider nowadays can handle WordPress, and the WordPress software is free, robust, powerful. And therefore, I'm mentioning here WordPress. You can get the plugin WordPress SEO. Whatever your software is, if you're using Dreamweaver front page, whatever, you need to do research to find out what's the way to make a sitemap in front page. How to make a sitemap in Squarespace. You need to look it up. Because we need to submit it to the search engines so that the search engine knows everything about our site. And so when someone searches, what are Chapulines? And we have submitted to Google that there, we've got a page called that exactly. When someone searches that, Google will see that in the database and show it to a person when they search. In Bing, we also want to link additional sites, which is that we're on, on a website, but we're also on Facebook, we're also on Instagram, we also have this, we also have that. We're going to tell Bing these are the other additional websites where we're at, where we're also doing SEM. And therefore, Bing, pay attention to all of these resources, my website and all my social media, to give me a better picture of how my traffic online is, is working. To actually set this up, it's right here, bing.com slash toolbox. Go ahead and click that link, or on your web browser, go to bing.com slash toolbox. That's the shortcut to go over to the webmaster tools. We're going to set this up together right now. Even if you don't have a website, you can still set this up and have it ready for the future. If you've got a website, hopefully you've got your login information. If you don't, again, you can still follow along, take notes. When you have your information, when you have your website, watch the video again and then get up to speed. And so the Webmaster tool is here. We've got sign in, sign up. If you've got already, how many of you have a Hotmail email address or an Outlook email address? If you've got a Microsoft account, you can easily sign in. It's already set up. If you don't have one, you can use your Gmail, your Hotmail, whatever, or uh, Yahoo Mail, Cox email, whatever, with sign up. I'll, sh I'll show that one in a moment. If you've already got a Microsoft account, just sign in. If you don't, I'll show you what sign up looks like briefly. And notice here, sign up now and receive $100 credit towards search marketing on Bing. I said on day one that this class is going to be the hard way, the long way for SEO. The easy way of SEO is to pay for it, to pay to be more visible on the search engines. Look at this. Bing gives you $100 to start off with putting ads on Bing to get found. So that might be just one of the positive aspects of setting this up. You're going to get more traffic, uh, search traffic via payment, and they start you off with 100 bucks. I'm going to look at sign up. You're going to need to fill in a bunch of information. It's all confidential and secure. This is one of the biggest companies in the world of technology, one of the most secure ones. So if you're not comfortable putting any information in here, wait till you do it at home. These computers have deep freeze, which is that when you turn them off, everything erases. Uh, so if you don't want to do it now, you can do it at home, but I recommend you do it now so you can see the whole process. It asks first name, last name, and this will be first name, last name, not your company name. A real person is going to set this up, and then we are going to add company, <coughs> company content. Username is simply an email address, and you can use your existing one. So if I already got john at yahoo.com, I can use that. Or if I want to create a brand new email address just for this, I can click get a new email, and it'll say would you like it for Outlook or Hotmail? The last time I taught this last week for another class, someone tried to put their email here under create an account, and it said, you've already got an account. So you might have already had an account for some reason. You want to log in with that account or retrieve the password if you can't remember it. That'll give you maybe a minute. Either sign up for the account here or just log in. 
And if you're creating an account, yes, it's going to ask for birthday and gender and phone number and such. This is valuable information of your website. To keep it the most secure, it's asking for a phone number to verify that you're a real person, not a spammer. It's asking for your contact information and birthday and such to help you get back into your account if you get locked out of it. You don't want to lose this information that that the search engines gather. So yes, take a moment to fill this in truthfully, securely. And if you're having any trouble, if you're having any trouble signing in, let me know. I'm going to sign in with my account, and I'll and I'll meet you guys there in one moment. Just try to either sign in or sign up, and then we'll go on. Yeah, that's what I just said a moment ago. So press back on the back button up there. And then what you're going to do is you're going to click sign in. Put in that email address again, and see if you're going to your usual password. Set this up before, but you might have used a different password. So let's take a moment to, to click on the can't access your account. And we're going to say correct your password. Next. And we're going to put in your email, the one you just put in. Select the first one. It's going to send an email over to your Gmail again. So put your Gmail in one more time here. And let's send. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and open another tab. Okay, let's go check your phone and see that you've gotten that uh, security code. So you see it doesn't feel like there's a code involved. You just close that tab all the way back to That's the process. Let me be back in a moment. Go ahead and go through that one more time and then send another code and then we'll go ahead and proceed. You might have typed something here. You might have typed something slightly different here.
All right, if you're not quite there, let me show a few more things here, and then if you need some help, I'll be there in a moment. But eventually, when, you, when you're able to log in, it's going to then have a screen that looks something like this, where you can track your site. Because uh, I have different accounts, it looks a little different for me. But um, I also, like I said, in addition to teaching, I'm part of a company, a company that we do all of this for clients. So this is very useful for me because I can track the traffic for many websites. You, for yourself also, you can track the traffic for many of your websites. At the top it says add a site, enter an address, or add your site here. Either or is the same way. So once you get to this screen, at the top you want to click add a site. This will be your website. So put in your website address. The name of your website. If you don't have a website, well, you just want to watch for the moment. This has to be a website that you control. So if you don't have a website, just wait a moment. If you do have a website, you put it in there, click Add. And then it'll say, it'll ask, okay, here's your website address. Do you have a sitemap? Again, this is a technical document that is a list of all of the pages on your site. Oftentimes, a sitemap address looks like something like this. Do not type that in unless you know that's your sitemap. You might have a website. You, you, I cannot assume, you cannot assume that you've got a sitemap. You have to check with your software or whoever created your site, do you have a sitemap? I don't know if I have one at the moment, so I won't add it. But if I then go home, check with my webmaster, <coughs> and she did put a sitemap, then I can come back, I can log in again, and there'll be a button that says Add Sitemap. But notice it's .xml. It's a, it's, a, it's a code. It's a computer language. You just don't write a list of all your pages. That doesn't work. So I can't add a sitemap at the moment, but I definitely want to add one when I get home. When do you receive the most traffic to your site? And there's these time periods, like the usual 9 to 5. This is, uh, this is asking because Bing and Google are going to check on your site periodically to see if there's anything new, updated and such, to find stuff on your website so that when someone searches, they can find you. But because they're checking your website, that causes some traffic. That causes downloads and connections and all of that internet traffic. And so if Bing, and later we'll set up Google, if they're both checking your website at different times of the day, and it, it might slow down your site. Here if we tell it, my usual traffic is between 9 and 5. Therefore, Bing, don't check on my site during those times. You're going to slow down my site. I don't know when the most traffic comes to my site. That's the whole point of setting all of this up. So I don't know. I'm going to say I get traffic all day long. So it will judiciously try to crawl your site more efficiently. Perhaps if I do get a lot of traffic between 5 and 11 p.m., I might tell Bing and later Google, don't check my site at this point. I don't know what it is, so I'll just put all, all day, and click Add. So after I follow these steps here, I will now get all of this data about my website that Bing sees. When someone searches these keywords, how long someone stays on my site, what pages are most popular, all of that stuff 
Bing will tell me. But what's to stop my competitor from doing that to me first? What's to stop my competitor from setting this up and seeing my traffic and stealing my traffic? This is what's to stop them, this verification screen. There are three ways to verify. You only need to do one of three. And I'll say right away, don't even try option three. Option three requires some technical complexity for you to edit CNAME records on your provider. So if you've got GoDaddy, they'll give you instructions how to do that, but not exactly the, the answer. So don't even try to do number three. Um, you're going to do either one or two. And when we do this, this lecture in the class, usually at this point, I'm happy to give everyone a couple of minutes of help to get it working if you're almost there. Because you've got a couple of ways here. One is, option one, that if you download this file, the one in, in item one, if you download it and then upload it to your site, so if you've got GoDaddy, you use the file manager, maybe you've used software called FileZilla. Whatever way you upload files to your website's server, this is option one. You download that file, you upload it, you come back to Bing and click verify at the bottom, and what Bing will do is it will look on your website for that file, and if it finds it, it's verified. Because you cannot do that to your competitors. You cannot log into their server and upload a file, and neither can they do that to you. That's how you verify ownership. It's like if you were to ask me, where do you live? And I say, I live on that mansion up on La Jolla. Well, they're not going to believe me until I go up to the front door in my, in my uh, limousine and have my butler open it for me and I walk in. They're not going to believe me until I actually get into my, my mansion. That's the same thing here. The search engine is not going to believe that this is your website until you verify it. Either option one. Option two. This requires that you take that line of code in the gray box and copy it and paste it into my site. I edit my site and depending on the way you do it, you're going to have a box that says meta tags, or you're going to have a box that says SEO, or you're going to go directly to your editor somehow, you're going to copy this line of code and paste it into your site in the head section. So you're going to do either one or two. I'm going to help people first come first serve. Uh, either way of these methods will work. I've done it for several classes <laughs> for several students throughout the years. We just need to figure out the best way for you. I can't show you up here. Click this, click that, click this because I can't show everyone's kinds of site. If I start to talk about how to do this in WordPress, not everyone has WordPress. If I start to talk about Squarespace, not everyone has Squarespace. So let's take a moment here. If you're able to do this right now and would like to, raise your hand, call me over, and I'll help you out. And when we're done with that, we'll go on to see what the whole point of this is. Yeah. And, and 
and I think these would be something else. I think, I think these two are okay, but I don't like these two. They're really too wordy. Keep in mind because you'll get notifications if there's any problems on your site and want to move it as soon as possible. If your site is infected with some kind of software and still trying to run as quickly as possible, you might be coming. What I would do is you might not be infected. I would like to see something in the first quarter. Actually, um, so that's so not a good one. So, so many more people that I see them in the So, we get a lot here. Exactly. On the screen, that's where you can have a list of 20, 50 different websites that can have a bunch of different websites in one login. Anyone else? Yes. So um, what you should do, what you should be doing there then, is choosing either method one or two to try to log in. I mean, to try to verify your site, um, and once you do so, I'll show you what it'll what it'll look like. Yours, because it's brand new. You won't have very much to look at. So I'll show you how mine would look. Notice I've got several clients and their websites and a bunch of data and such. You're going to have one, but you can add more than you want, m more if you want. And after adding a particular client, I see I see here. There's going to be these various columns, messages. If there's any problems with your site. It'll let you know. Then you've got clicks from search, clicks, and then appear in search. There's impressions, there's conversions. Mm -hmm. The impressions are that this site appeared 53% more times when someone searched for keywords. That site appeared 53% more times. A little more valuable are the actual clicks, the conversions. 33% more clicks from the last 30 days. Notice on the top right corner we have a time period. You will get more accurate results with longer time periods because um, one 30-day snapshot of things might not be enough to really gather good intelligence. So the sooner you set up the webmaster tools, either Google or Bing, the better, because then the longer it can gather information the longer you can see what's working or what's not or what, what are the most popular months of the year for traffic what are the most popular days of the week for traffic all of that so if you just set it up today it's gonna start gathering data from today so the sooner you set it up the better so if I see numbers that are red let's see any examples here okay this one for example 
it, it appeared more times in search, but it was clicked a little bit less than last month. How much less I can click to view the exact amount. Um, so it's not just percentages, it'll be numbers, but let's look at the opposite over here. Appeared less times in search, but more clicks. So sometimes they'll be both positive or both negative or one or the other and vice versa. What do, what's a good number, what's a bad number? I can't tell you unless I know about your company. So obviously we would want more more impressions and more conversions. That's ultimately the goal. But if we don't get both greens every month after month, that's okay. Let's say I get still more clicks but less results. You say, how can that be? Well, sometimes people accidentally type the name of the of the website into search instead of the address bar. Or maybe what if a person has the bookmark the bookmark saved on their web browser and they go to it directly. So not necessarily will correlate. They might search for it less, but you'll still get more, more clicks. Then the last two columns also relate, which is pages crawled and pages indexed. Bing and Google are going to go on your website, they're going to crawl, they're going to send web crawlers, these little automated programs, to go to your website and, f and go to the home page and find the link and click the next link and the next link and the <laughs> next link. They're going to crawl your website. Um, so if you have less crawls, that just means it hasn't checked your site in this time period, perhaps. Well, Pages indexed is related to that because once it finds a page that is new, that it didn't find previously, it'll add it to the index. And the index is their database of all of the things on your website. So on any of these, that might be a positive number like here, that's saying something new was added to the website, Google found it and indexed it, Google saved it. So again, what's good, what's bad? The pages indexed is the good one, but you're not going to always have it green. Sometimes you might not post a blog post. That's one of the ways to get that green, to post more content on, online, add, add to the blog. So maybe it found less stuff. You added one blog post this month, last month you added two, but it did add one, it, it, it did increase what it saved. And there's also neutral, if nothing really changed, it'll be blue. I'm not sure why you have an infinity uh, positive infinity that just means more traffic but maybe the div maybe by dividing it somehow you get infinity but anyway this one had more searches more impressions and more conversions how much more maybe when it finishes crunching the numbers it'll tell me how much more but in an overview this is what I get here if I want to then get more details I can click on my site And here's the actual numbers. So in February, I got 200 <coughs> clicks in January 206. Well, first of all, there's less days in February. And now we're seeing a red number, but only 2%, which is just six clicks. Not so bad. How much appeared in search? Well, raw numbers is a little bit less. But 40 people difference or 40 views on search different is not so much to even register a percentage. How many pages were there links for this month, last month? Uh, notice here I, I get pages indexed. So sometimes pages go down because for that particular client, the um, there's various events that are published on the site, the event is over, so the page is removed. It doesn't exist anymore. So that's why less pages are saved to the index, because they were removed. There's also a relationship here between that then. Crawl errors. This one is not shown on the previous screen. I wish it would. You don't see this until you go to this next screen. Crawl errors. So are there broken links on your site? The, the Bing spider went to your site followed a link and at some point 
the link was broken. The search engines look at that also for SEO. They also look to see if you've got broken links because the search engines tell us nowadays optimize for people not for the search engine. The search engine is a computer program. It doesn't have intelligence. A person has intelligence, knows what they want, what they're looking for, knows what they like, what they don't like. So the search engines say, make sure your site is great for people, not for the search engines. And therefore, for people, if I go to your website and I want to click a link to read your next article and it's broken, that's annoying to me. And I may say, I may say this is an amateur. I may leave your site. I may not come back. So last month there were a few broken links on the site. This month there are less broken links. And again, this particular client has a, a variety of items that are published and then removed because the event is over. But if you don't do that and you have a lot of crawl errors, that's something to look into. Why are there so many broken pages on your site? Again, sitemap, very important. We added a sitemap, it found these pages, it crawled it, success, it knows more about this client's site. Search keywords. I can see here, what are the most popular keywords people search for to find this client? I can organize by columns and such. The highest CTR, nearly 10%, was people searching for the menu. Then history of barbecue. And when Andrew Zimmern came to the restaurant and did an episode. Right here I'm seeing michotes, which is another traditional Mexican food. This is often meat wrapped in parchment paper and slow cooked with a bunch of things. They have rabbit michote. This is actually a variation of the spelling. It's often with an X. People might not know that. So what I'm learning here is sometimes people search for michotes with the alternate spelling that's giving me an idea perhaps to include that keyword or use that keyword more often. I developed the keywords but here's a keyword that I didn't even think about. So this is what Bing is seeing on keywords. And uh, for example, barbacoa, la coche, pulque, all of these keywords, all of these food and beverages that the restaurant sells. And do you notice a little dollar symbol next to them all? As I said, you can either do SEO organically, which is for free, but it's the hard way, or you can do PPC, pay per click. You can do the paid version of SEO. And here, if I want to corner the market on this keyword, when someone searches barbacoa, I can have it that my page shows up more often than the competitor if I pay. And notice I've got a price for mainline and sidebar. It costs five cents per click for my client's page to show up on the main search line, the main area of search, or five cents on the sidebar. Some are more expensive on the main line, some less on the sidebar. So if I set up a pool of $20 with Bing, every time someone sees my result on the main line and clicks on it, it deducts five cents from my $20. But as I said, the problem with paid SEO is that there's competition, especially when you're trying to get found for a keyword that a lot of people are using. Remember the drawing of the long tail keyword? There are some keywords that are used a lot, and therefore you're going to have a hard time getting found by it. And some keywords that are not used a lot, and you'll have an easier time getting found. So here it's saying, on average though, people are spending 10 cents per click on the main line with that keyword. And they're spending 7 cents on the main line for that keyword on the side sidebar. So if I want to beat the competition, I'm going to say 15 cents per click on the main line. And now, instead of paying five 
cents out of my $20. I'm paying 15. My $20 is going to run out faster. And some keywords are 50 cents, 99 cents, two dollars. Some keywords, like when we did on the first day, we searched web design, and I saw literally a billion results. If I want to stand out from all of those results of web design, I'm probably going to be paying two dollars, five dollars, ten dollars, I don't know, per click to try to stand out from the competition. This is still valuable to see and to brainstorm keywords that you might not have had in mind before. So I'm seeing people search Dine in LA and also Dine LA and LA Dine Week 2016. There's Chapulinas. I see here, ¿Cómo se hace la barbacoa? How to make barbacoa. So I might think about if some traffic is coming from that, uh, or some searching at least, 16 searches, no clicks, but maybe if I create a blog post titled that exactly and add a description that really entices people, when they see it they can click. Okay, here's another variation. There's wheat la coche and there's quit la coche. There's a variation on that word that I might now know to use in other ways. So all of this I can download and work with. I can see what are the pages that were clicked on when someone searched barbacoa and if they clicked what were the pages that people actually saw it was our history of barbacoa the Spanish version of the biography of the food. It looks like when that keyword appeared at around 8th place on the search results page on the SERP, that's when it got most clicks, most click-through. But obviously you see clicks and click-through can be different. This has got two clicks, but a lower CTR. It's, just, it's math. You take one divide by the other and it's your CTR. Another important thing to look at here on these Bing Webmaster Tools is the inbound links. On the inbound links, um, these are links to your website. And one of the most important things, let me write some notes here. Inbound links are very important to modern SEO. Inbound links, also known as incoming links, links to your site, backlinks, so inbound links, incoming links, links to your site, backlinks, all of them are synonymous. But basically, what it is is a link from another site you do not control pointing to your site. So if I've got a restaurant, I've got a bakery, I've got some food place, I want critics to write about and review my restaurant and they're gonna write about it on their own websites on their own blogs and hopefully they wrote about my company and added a link from their blog post to my home page that is great I want a link from someone else to my site because the search engines look at this they take that into account they take so many things into account and one of the things it does is keeps track of inbound links. So think about it this way. If you um, wrote a paper in, in high school or college, a 10-page paper, 
and you turned it in, and you didn't include your works cited page, your citations, that paper would be thrown away. You spent all that time and effort to write 10 pages, you didn't cite your references, it gets thrown away. Because uh, in, in academia, you are building upon the ideas of others. You probably did not come up with all of that research, all of those experiments, all of those results to put into that research paper. You went to the library, you read books online, you looked up Wikipedia, you found information online, and you synthesized it into your own words, 10-page paper. You therefore felt that those works that you cited were good enough for you to include in your paper. They bolstered your claim. They were relevant to your paper. That applies to inbound links as well. If you, my blog, if my website, if my blog has a lot of great articles on a variety of Mexican food, and some food critic is writing about the best Mexican food in Los Angeles, and they link to this site, this client, that's because they're the best. They have something that that critic wants to write about. Uh, they have a link from their site to my site. They've sort of given approval, uh, you know, a thumbs up, a, uh, an endorsement of the content of the client on their site because it's good, it's relevant. So this page that shows you all of those links from other sites, the point of that is to see who's linking to my site. Right here, inbound links. There are 614 links pointed to the home page, 26 pointing to this blog post, 22 pointing to the menu. So if I go look at this one blog post, it tells me from survivingmexico.com from dnainfo.com. Let's see this one, sandiegoreader.com, Food GPS, LA Times, Zagat, KCRW. So all of these websites that we do not control, we don't have any say in foodmarathon.com or foodgps or kcrw, Rachel Ray, Mag. We don't have any say on those sites. We did not ask. We did not pay to get placed there. We did not ask for a link. Those are the best kinds of backlinks. Those that you did not ask for, did not pay for, the search engines know that, the search engines look at that, and they see 600 links compared to your competitor that has 20 links, you're going to get higher placement than your competitor because the search engine will see your site is more relevant to people than your competitors. If we had more days, we would talk about in detail how to get more backlinks. You are free to take the third day next month when the class starts again, or take the whole sequence again but we would talk about strategies for that. And you could also look up online how to get more backlinks. Be careful about that because everyone's going to tell you conflicting things. Hopefully the best results are those that have good ratings and comments so that you can follow that advice. But this is the point of setting up Bing Webmaster Tools, all of this wealth of information for me to act upon it. Again, on a third day we would talk more about how to act upon all of this information. But at the very least, you should be gathering this information as soon as possible by setting up the webmaster tools. We'll do the same thing for Google in just a moment, but any general questions at this point? You, you wouldn't really say a DNS provider, you, you, it's, a, it's your hosting provider. Yes, so you need, uh, can you repeat that, your hosting provider and what else? To log in, that's the information that I need because I don't have that, so I just wanted to be sure I have that. Uh, most likely you're going to need your service provider's login information, yes. Alright, so this was the section on Bing. 
what we will do now here uh, Google and this is going to be very similar to to Bing so we'll go back to my web browser and notice I've got two links here the thing about <coughs> Google is that unfortunately it's very confusing on Bing it's one login all the information is there on Google there are two logins here that I listed and there's like six other logins each one does a bunch of different things <coughs> on Google on Bing I, I can go there directly and buy the keywords on Google I have to go specifically to adwords.com and do it there on Bing I can look up I can add I can look up my traffic sources and all of that stuff on Google I do one thing on Webmaster Tools and I do another thing on Analytics. So the thing about Google is they're separate sources. I keep saying that we'll probably mix them together one day. It doesn't look like it. It looks like they've made a couple even more services with their own logins as well. I don't think Google's ever going to integrate these. You're going to need to go to all of these separate websites to do all of these things. And so what we'll do first is we, we'll go to google.com slash webmasters. So click on that link or go to google.com slash webmasters. The thing about this, to add to the more confusion, I've been using this for years. It's been called Google Webmasters for years, but now they're starting to call it Search Console. That's the modern term for it. I always forget it and I mix it up. Search Console, it's still in my notes, but Search Console is Google Webmaster Tools. Search Console, track your site search performance and browse around for more webmaster resources. So one half of what Bing does is here, and the other half is in Google Analytics. So Bing has it all on one login, bing.com slash toolbox. Google has it in here and a couple of other screens. We need to do the same thing here on, Se on Search Console that we did on Bing. We need to tell it our website, and then we need to verify the site, and then we get, the, we get this traffic. Because Bing is only showing us results from Bing. Google Search Console will show us results from Google. So click on Search Console. And here it's going to ask you to log in, to sign in or sign up. Sign in either with a Gmail address. If you've already got Gmail, just sign in with it. It's pretty straightforward. If you don't, it'll ask you to create a new account. If you create a new account, you can select to choose your existing one. If you've got Cox email, you can use that. So either sign in or sign up, and then I'll show you what happens on the next screen. So when you first set, when you first log into that, I think it's going to look different on yours, just because mine's already set up. So let me see if I can just like do that. Okay, you guys see right away is instead a little website with a wrench. That's good. Uh, so you so you guys see a little video of a of a website with a wrench. You can watch that on your own later, but it tells you what's what search 
console about. But you're going to see a button, I, a little box, I think, that says Add Your Website. So you're going to add your website, but the problem is, so mine, mine doesn't look exactly, exactly the same, but it's something like this, Add a Website. And here's the problem. For Bing, it doesn't matter, but for Google, it does. What matters is, if you type HTTP colon slash www.victor.com, <coughs> that, for Google, is different than HTTP victor.com. Do you see the difference? www, non www. It's different, and it matters for Google, but not for Bing. So we have to add both versions of our site to Google. On a technical level, they are different websites. Not for people, but for the search engine, for Google. And so we need to add both, one first and the other. Doesn't matter which one, but I'm going to add the version without www first. We'll finish setting it up, and then we can add the other version pretty easily. And you'll have both. To further confuse it, if your website also has SSL, if your website has security, does your website have HTTPS? If your website also has HTTPS, you have to add that version too. The non-WW version and the WW version. So I might have Victor, Victor's Bank HTTPS and Victor's Bank WWW HTTPS. We're going to do the very most basic one first, the non-WW version, non-secure. Most of you don't have security. That's an extra thing you have to pay for yearly. You may pay Bluehost or GoDaddy for your website, but you're also going to pay them for SSL, security. That little lock in the top left corner, that's not free. It's about $90 or so per year. But I'm going to start off with the plain old HTTP non-WW version. Click Continue. It may ask you also for a lot more information that I don't have here again. I've already set this account up. I don't know if it's going to ask you for extra things. Do you guys see any extra boxes? If it doesn't, that's good. If it does ask you for a few extra boxes, you do want to fill that in as best as you can. Nope. Nope, not yet. I'm still getting to that. Uh, so here we've got, like Bing, we've got a few different ways to verify. On Bing, we had option one, which was a line of, which, which, which was a file that we uploaded. Option two was a line of code, and option three was the one that don't even bother. On Google, it may detect that you've got GoDaddy or something, and it may say something that says something like domain name provider, select your registrar. That's the same one that I'm going to say, don't even bother with that one on Bing or Google. If the recommended method is something about your provider, don't even bother with it. Either on the alternate method or maybe the recommended, it's going to say either HTML file upload, and remember we only do one of these, either the upload or, alternate method, HTML tag. That's the same thing that I did on Bing. Or the domain provider, don't even bother. Or Google Analytics. If you've got Google Analytics already set up, you can use Analytics to vouch for your search console. It's two different things. And so if you've got Analytics, you can use it to set this up. I'm going to assume you don't have it yet. That's why you're in this class. And then the other option is Tag Manager. If you've got the Tag Manager set up, you can use that to vouch for this one. You probably don't have it. So you're either going to do HTML tag or HTML file upload. We're going to take a quick moment again if you need it, like we did earlier for Bing, to verify in either of these methods. Once you've done one of those methods, click Verify Now. If you can't do it now, click Not Now. Does anyone need any help? Uh, does anyone need any help verifying? Question? Um, well, 
Um, you need help verifying? Okay, so again, once you've got this set up, this is when you're going to start to gather the data. This shows it to you in one month increments, but if you um, set this up, you will see, like for my example, I've got all of these clients. They're listed as the WW version and the non-WW. As soon as you set this up the first time, it's going to send you an email to remind you to also do the other version. <laughs> the other version. If I did the, the non-W version, it'll send me an email that says, don't forget to do WW version. Uh, and it's simply the process of adding another property with the new name. And, and on that one, you don't even have to go through the whole steps. You just click verify, and it'll do it. And so notice here, I've got all, all of these, both versions of the sites. You do want that. Oh, this one seems to have some trouble, so I need to figure out what the trouble is. Um, that one's not verified yet. And whatever. So this is what you need to do. You need to verify. And the point of this, once you've got it set up and you view your data, you can click on your site and view the data. That's what you'll see here. Similar to, uh, to Bing, but a difference here is there's a column of current status, crawl errors. There's no, there don't seem to be any errors with the server itself. If any of these give you errors, you want to fix them. How do you fix them? There's going to be help here on the top right. URL errors, 55 not found. So 55 broken links. I can read, see that completely under crawl errors. Again, this particular client, uh, you we add stuff and we remove it on a regular basis, so there's broken links. Search analytics, 3,600 total clicks. So much higher than over on Bing because, again, 60% market share. But in this time period of 30 days, there's an upward trend. There was 132 clicks, and that's up to 145. So an upward trend of traffic. If there was a downward trend, that would be something to be concerned about. But the more you're active, the more you're active on your site or social media, the better. And then a site map. There's a site map that was added, and it's seeing here pictures that it found and pictures that it saved, pages that it found and saved. So this is all the data. Again, we don't quite have time to get into it in detail, but the setup is like this. And you can go in and look at this data. Here's 3,000 clicks within this time period, or th actually th uh, under queries, then I see these are the popular terms that people search for. What are the popular pages? I see the menu is second place. What about countries? US, then Mexico. 
devices. Um, more people are coming to this website on a mobile device than on a desktop, and very few are coming on a tablet. If I want more time, this this month with last month, here's what difference I had. Both are an upward trend. Last month was 92 and it ended with 102. This month started with 132 and went up to 145. So the longer you set this up, I mean the earlier you set this up, the more data you'll gather. There's 90 days. And there was a Google update on February 14th. Google changed their algorithm. They changed the rules. They changed what's good and what's bad. I can see what was that update. Now that's funny. If I can click on it, it goes away. But anyway, um, for the last 90 days, 112 clicks, and then more recently, 145 clicks, so it is also trending upward. It was stable for a while, and now it's gone upwards. And a lot of this is a result of actually doing something, tweeting something, adding a new blog post, being active. What's also useful about Search Console, let's look at this. You might not have your site verified, but you can, I believe you can still see this. If you go on Search Console to other resources, you can look at Page Speed Insights. This will <coughs> tell you how fast or slow your website is and advice on how to fix it. Page Speed Insights. So here, from 100 points, it's right below the right below the better grade, you know, 50 to 59, 60 to 69, 70 to 79, etc. So this one it says there's a couple of speed problems with this site. These are items that should be fixed. These are ones consider fixing. These are things that have passed. Now sometimes these are very technical, unfortunately. So it'll tell you you've got a problem but maybe not the best way to fix it. Eliminate render blocking JavaScript. What does that mean? Show how to fix. Well, here it's telling me that these files should be um, added um, in a different way, and so that might be something to do. Optimize images. It sees that some of these images are, are a bit large. You can get a 20% reduction on size and therefore more speed if you think about changing the size of these pictures. How do we do that? Again, it all depends on, on uh, your abilities. Like, like you need to use Photoshop and such to be able to edit pictures. And it'll show you on mobile and on desktop. So all this information is very valuable to show what's working or what's not working.
this is something that you need to look at the Google Webmaster Tools and the Bing Webmaster Tools once a month. You need to log in and check things out so that things aren't how you, you know, so that things aren't uh, problematic. So this is one half of the this is one side of the coin with Google. With Bing, it was all in one area, um, Bing.com toolbox. But here we've got Search Console. We're going to take one more break, and then when we come back, we'll do Google Analytics. That's a big topic. Uh, that one also has to be set up, and again, it's not super complicated, but it's best to have someone to help. So let's. Um, Take one more break. It's two fifty. We'll be back at two at three o'clock. When we come back, we will do uh, Google Analytics. I'll turn the printer back on if anyone would like, and we'll be back at three.